40% of Nigerian households own generators and bear the associated costs. First, the cost of purchasing generators, an estimated $500 million between 2015 and 2019, is higher than the capital expenditure in Nigeria's 2022 budget. The Federal Republic of Nigeria, with a population estimated at 198 million people in 2018 and a landmass of 110,771 square kilometers, is not only Africa's most populated country, but also the seventh most populous country in the world. Despite Nigeria being the world's 12th largest producer of petroleum and 8th largest exporter and having the 10th largest proven reserves, the country faces a huge challenge of power supply. Nigeria's continuous dependence on oil to run its economy has proved unsustainable and unprofitable to the economy. As the country's irregular power supply is one of the major challenges hampering economic development of Africa's largest economy. This problem has created a trend of low-cost generator use, commonly called I I better pass my neighbor among members of Nigerians up and coming middle class population. Most Nigerians have to depend on these personal generators to get through everyday tasks that require power usage. Nigerians' first power plant with a nameplate capacity of 2 megawatts was installed in Lagos in 1896, marking the commencement of electricity generation in Nigeria. In 1929, the first electric utility company, the Nigerian Electricity Supply Company, was established. A federal government-owned monopoly, the National Electric Power Authority, NEPA, was in charge of the generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity by the year 2000. The Power Sector Reform Act was established in 2005, paving way for the National Electric Power Policy aimed at establishing an efficient electricity market in Nigeria. Nigeria has privatized its distribution companies, so there is a wide range of tariffs. The federal government, however, still owns the transmission company. Nigeria is going through an alarming energy crisis with 60 to 70 percent of its population of almost 2 million people living without regular access to electricity. Nigeria is endowed with large oil, gas, hydro, and solar resources, and it already has the capacity to produce an estimated 7,000 megawatts of electric power from existing plants. But because of problems such as inadequate infrastructure and problems associated with gas supply and water shortages, only about 40,000 megawatts reaches the national grid. This is insufficient for the country population. The June 2022 report by Stairs and Sterling titled Nigerian State of Power Electrifying the Nation's Economy stated that the cost expended on diesel and petrol for electricity generation by Nigerians was having severe economic impact on households and businesses. Nigerian households on average have electricity in their homes for 15 to 18 hours each day. Of that, 44% or 6.8 hours is self-supplied by generators and this differs by geography. In a state like Taraba, only 19% has old report having electricity. What are the effects of energy crisis? The undersupply of energy impacts citizens' daily lives in diverse ways. Without adequate electricity supply, medicine store is affected, food goes bad because refrigerator is impossible and running water is not available. Because of this problem, many people have resorted to self-generation of power using independent generators for most commercial activities and small low-cost diesel and petrol generators, popularly known as I better pass my neighbor for most domestic activities. Although generators are costly to purchase and operate, it has become a necessity. This dependence on self-generation using diesel power generators by businesses has given rise to an increase in the price of goods and services. Cost of public and private transport, accommodation, hotels, renting, a house or apartment, education and social functions like weddings and funerals are all dependent on the price of fuel. The African Development Bank estimates that Nigerians spend $14 billion fueling petrol or diesel power generators. The reliance on self-generated electricity through power generating sets poses health and environmental threats due to pollution and efficiency concerns. These threats are more pronounced in the low-income areas of major Nigerian cities, which are usually overpopulated. What are the health implications of generator usage? The first thing is air pollution. Diesel and petrol generators emit pollutants, such as 
as carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxide, and particulate matter. These pollutants contribute to air pollution, which can have detrimental effects on human health and contribute to climate change. Generators are known for their noise emissions, causing noise pollution that can disrupt the tranquility of neighborhoods and have negative impacts on human well-being. The burning of fossil fuels in generators releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These emissions contribute to global warming and climate change. What could be the way forward? Some experts have advocated that the federal government has to place a ban on the bulk import of small generators, citing air pollution and health risks as the reason for the ban. However, the import and sales of small single-unit generators remain permitted by the government. The ban neither presents a long-term solution to the health hazards caused by the use of small generators nor addresses the underlying problem of the undersupply of energy. This is because people who have the means can always upgrade to the use of even larger diesel generators, which leads to worse gas emissions coupled with more noise pollution. A better solution could be to fix the problems with the national grid and explore alternative clean energy sources. Some Nigerians in an interview with BTV News suggest ways the issue of electricity can be addressed holistically. Uh, Nigeria should consider uh, implementing more, uh, multifactorial efforts. We should diversify from just having so dependence on hydro. There should be consideration for solar. There should be consideration for coal. There should also be consideration for gas power turbines. Yes, areas that actually have gas deposits, things like the southeast, south south regions that are the Niger Delta regions that have huge amount of gas should consider switching into gas turbines. Let them find a way to sort it out. There are some places in Nigeria that don't have electricity. It depends on them. They know what to do. If you are law abiding, we'll stop the habit of you know stealing transformer and other things that will cause danger to the life of both um, the people and we ourselves. We need to work on our infrastructure of that thing that will produce the electricity first. But that is the first issue. We don't even know, most people don't even know where electricity comes from. We don't have, most people, they produce their own transformers, some use solar. So we need to, our government need to sit down, put their head down. They need to think. So they don't know how they'll put it first. They should go and get generator, yes. And buy fuel. I know it's going to be very expensive. Cost of living, though, hard, but what to do? Uh, it's Nigeria. That's our country. We buy generator and use it. Electricity and water are most essential needs of man, not undermining roads and other infrastructure. These needs have not been provided adequately as required by the government even after over six decades of Nigerians' independence. The question on the leaves of many is, can Nigeria one day do away with the use of generators and rely solely on government electricity generation? Well, for dealers or importers of generators, can they ever wish for a stable electricity supply in Nigeria? Why many Nigerians may be wishing, hoping, and praying for an improved electricity supply? Dealers and distributors of generating set may wish otherwise. And that's our special report for today. Thank you so very much for watching. Best Orator reporting for BTV News.